In November 2020, CSIR NET Physical Science Paper, seven questions were asked from Thermodynamics and Statistical Physics. Let's solve these seven questions. A basket consists of an infinite number of red and black balls in the proportion of P and 1 minus P. Three balls are drawn at random without replacement. The probability of there being two red and one black is a maximum 4. This question is based on the binomial distribution. Binomial distribution is being applicable when an experiment or trial has two possible outcomes. Like tossing a coin. Whenever a coin is tossed, the possible outcomes are either head or tail. Binomial distribution is used for this type of trial. According to this distribution, the total probability of both outcomes in a single trial will be 1. If one outcome has a probability p, the other outcome will have a probability 1 minus p. So binomial distribution in an n trial is given by this relation. According to the question, infinite number of balls are placed in a basket whose colors are red and black. In such a situation, if one ball is picked from the basket, then only two possible outcomes can occur. The ball will be either red or black. Therefore, this problem can be solved with binomial distribution. In the question, the proportions of both the balls are given. This proportion can consider their probability. Because the higher the proportion of a particle is, the greater the probability of picking that particle will be. Also, both these probability we have a total 1. In the question, this is also mentioned that three balls have to be picked randomly. Means we need to do three trials and want to know when the probability of two red balls and one being black ball will be maximum after these three trials. So, when we substitute these variables in relation to binomial distribution, we get probability 3p square minus 3p cube. This is the curve of binomial distribution of multiple trials. If probability is maximum, then this will represent the peak point of the curve. If the slope of this point or the first order derivative is taken, then it should be zero. By taking the first order derivative of the calculated probability, and simplifying this, we get the probability 2 by 3. So option 4 is correct. For an ideal gas consisting of n distinguishable particles in a volume V, the probability of finding exactly two particles in a volume del V is. This question is based on the Poisson distribution. But how? We have solved the last question with binomial distribution. Then why not this one? Let's understand the difference in the both the distributions. However, both distributions calculate the probability of succession of any random events. But where binomial distribution is based on discrete events, the Poisson distribution is based on the continuous events. Like tossing a coin is a discrete event, because in this event only two outcomes can be possible, either head or tail. There can be no outcomes between these two while the distribution of gas molecules in a volume is not discrete. Rather, they can be distributed anywhere in the entire volume. Binomial distribution has a certain n number of attempts, which have a probability p of success. But the number of attempts in Poisson distribution are infinite, and the chances of success in them are infinitesimal. So, if n attempts of a binomial distribution have a probability p of success, and if n tends to infinite but p tends to 0, then np tends to be lambda. When this happens, the distribution changes from binomial to Poisson distribution, whose parameter will be lambda. A Poisson distribution is given by this relation, where lambda is the average number of events or particles, k is the number of occurrence. According to the question, if there are n particles in V volume, what will be the probability of two particles in delta V volume? If V volume contains n particles, then delta V volume will contain V by n delta V particles. This represents the average number of particles in delta V volume. By substituting these values in relation, we get the probability of distribution of two particles in delta V volume, which matches with the option 3.
The temperature variation of the resistivity of four materials are shown in the following graphs. The material that would make the most sensitive temperature sensor when used at temperatures between T1 and T2 is. Temperature sensors are devices that measure the temperature of an object. In the question such a temperature sensor has been given whose resistivity depends on its temperature. Any temperature sensor should be such that shows different resistivity at different temperature. It should not be happen that the material have the same resistivity at two different temperatures. In such a situation, temperatures cannot be differentiated. Therefore, curve A and D cannot be a good sensors because both of them are getting the same resistivity at the two different temperatures. The second thing is the variation in the temperature should also produce a significant change in the resistivity of the material. The higher the change, the more accurate it will be able to measure the temperature. Comparing curve B and C, curve C is quite slopy, means even a slight change in the temperature will produce significant change in the resistivity, while in curve 2 initially has no change in its resistivity. Hence, option C is the curve of a most sensitive temperature sensor. The Hamiltonian of a system of n non-interacting particles, each of mass m, in one dimension is h. The average internal energy of the system is. In the most general way, the solution of this question can be calculated with the help of the partition function. If the partition function of a system is g, then the average energy of that system is given by this relation. So first we need to calculate the partition function of the given system. If the system has Hamiltonian h, then the partition function of that system is given by this relation. Here double integration is for the Hamiltonian's two variables, position and momentum. Both variable can range from plus infinite to minus infinite. Let's rearrange this relation. Now to solve this further, we need to use direct integral relation. If a function is such an exponential function, its integration is equal to 1 by n, gamma of 1 by n upon a to the power 1 by n. Solving both integration with the help of this, we get this value of partition function. Now by substituting the partition function in the relation of average energy, we get an average energy 3 by 4 kT, which is matches with the option 2. An idealized atom has a non degenerate ground state at zero energy and G fold degenerate excited state of energy E. In a non-interacting system of n such atoms, the population of the excited state may exceed that of the ground state above a temperature T. The minimum value of the G for which this is possible is. This question is also based on the partition function. According to the question, there are two energy levels. The ground state has energy zero is a non-degenerate state. The excited state has energy E is a G degenerate. It has been asked that on which fold degeneracy the population of the excited state will exceed the ground state. So first we need to calculate the population or the probability of both levels. Because the higher the probability of occupancy of the particles in a level, the higher the population of the particles in that level. The probability of a level is given by this relation, where G is the partition function. The partition function of a system is given by summation gi e to the power minus beta ei. So since the ground state level is zero, while the excited level is of g degenerate, the partition function of this system will be 1 plus g e to the power minus beta e. By substituting the partition function of the system in probability, we get the probabilities of both levels. As mentioned in the question, the system has total n atoms. But 1 upon 1 plus g e to the power minus beta e is the probability of the atoms in the ground level. So the number of atoms in the ground level will be n upon 1 plus g e to the power minus beta e. Similarly, the number of atoms in the excited state will be n g e to the power minus beta e upon 1 plus g e to the power minus beta e. Now if we take the ratio of the number of atoms in both the levels, then we get this ratio. To be number of atoms in excited state more than the ground state, it is necessary that this ratio to be greater than 1. For this, we need to use the temperature condition given in the question. 
according to this condition t is greater than e upon 2 kb log 2 if we rearrange this relation we get the value of e to the power beta e less than 4 so in the term of the ratio of number of atoms the denominator will be less than 4 that means the value of g more than or equal to be 4 will increase the number of particles in the excited state compared to the ground state there are two such options option 1 and 2 but this is mentioned in the question that the minimum value of g is to be found which fulfill this condition so the minimum value of g of these two is 4 therefore option 2 is correct two idealized gases in a box are initially separated by a partition let n1 v1 and n2 v2 be the number of particles and volumes occupied by the two system when the partition is removed the pressure of the mixing at an equilibrium temperature t is according to the question two ideal gases are separated by a partition in a box if the partition is removed what will be the pressure of the mixture at equilibrium temperature after mixing as soon as we remove the partition both gases will be mixed into each other and spread to the volume of the entire box means the total number of gas molecules will become n1 plus n2 and the total volume will be equal to the sum of the volume of both partitions while after mixing equilibrium temperature is given t since gases are ideal the ideal gas equation will be pv equals to nrt in which if n is replaced by the avogadro number then r upon na will be equal to the boltzmann constant after substituting the values of the total volume and total number of molecules the final pressure of mixed gas comes this which is option 2 the hamiltonian of a system of three spins is h its canonical partition function at temperature t is this question is also based on the partition function in the question the hamiltonian is given for three spins where the value of spin can be either plus 1 or minus 1. So what will be the canonical partition function of this 3 spin system? First of all we need to check the possible configuration of 3 spins. There can be a total of 8 possible configurations of 3 spins with plus minus 1. The corresponding energy of these configurations can be calculated from the given Hamiltonian. As we can see these 8 configurations are representing 3 energy levels. 2j, 0 and minus 2j energy levels. These configurations have 4 levels of 0 energy. This means degeneracy is 4. Similarly, 2j energy has 2 levels and minus 2j energy also has 2 energy levels. So their degeneracy will be 2. Now writing the partition function for these 3 energy levels and simplifying it gives us the total partition function of the system which is equal to option 2.